I'm excited to really go into the offseason program, Vic Fangio especially, because I want to see how the players are going to react to his hard-nosed take on what his practices are going to be like, what he will be like just towards the players in general, because we're going to talk about how he was refined or defined, I should say, as a defensive coordinator, mostly with the Miami Dolphins last year. We're going to be talking about the secondary with Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeJean and why Bradbury needs to go as soon as possible because the Eagles are in a perfect position right now. There's a lot to go over here. We've got news on Sidney Brown. We have news on joint practices. I think we finally have news on who we're going to be uh, practicing with or against. So I'm excited. And uh, let's get into it all. Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. Just want to go over some news for the Philadelphia Eagles, as usual. Now, Vic Fangio obviously coming as defensive coordinator for the first time with the Philadelphia Eagles, obviously was very favored and probably would have been the D.C. last year if Gann didn't pull his stunt at the end of 2022. You know, Van Fangio left early um, two weeks before the Super Bowl in 22 to go find pretty much another job at that point as he was a consultant here. Now, when it comes to Vic Fangio, I've been, I've been on this defense as much as we can talk about the offense so much, the defense is so important to me because the Eagles are in a very special state, okay? When it comes to the players that they have acquired, Fangio having a lot of pull within the organization. I mean, I, from what Fangio said, you know, for free agency or for the draft especially, he gave Howie Roseman seven players that he really liked and why he liked those players. And really, Howie Roseman had the final say in all that, but I know that Fangio had a lot of pull regarding not only, you know, getting players, but picking and signing or, you know, hiring his own assistant coaches. Now, we go into last year with Fangio, or at least when he was with Miami, that there's going to be players that didn't like him. Obviously, Javon Holland, Jalen Ramsey, guys like that didn't really respect him. There was some, I guess, some rumors behind the lines of that Miami play. He called some my that Miami players. There was a lot of Miami players that didn't want to work. I guess that was really the report going into this whole entire thing, that they didn't work hard. That was the rumor. Um, well, we don't know if that's even true or whatnot. Um, and then obviously this report from, uh, you know, that works for Miami said there were quite a few players on the team that didn't necessarily get along with Fangio. Uh, it wasn't a great relationship with man, uh, many of the players. There were some guys that loved him. There were quite a few that didn't. It definitely wasn't an anonymous positive relationship going into free agency was really weird for me because I felt like he was going to get a lot of the Miami players that were there. Um, you know, I figured he would have signed a couple guys, Van Ginkle being one at linebacker, just because, you know, he made him, you know, he got him his next contract on his, on the, you know, on his last year of his deal. So I figured, but we didn't pick up any players from Miami, surprisingly. So they went a totally different direction. They started fresh. They, they wanted to fish around a little bit more and get some other type options. And then obviously going to the draft, they went a direction that we didn't think they were going to go into. Okay. Um, I think this is taken out of context so much. It's like if Fangio is an asshole, then I'm cool with it because I don't want a laid back practice. If you heard during the press conference, Fangio even talked about adding more practices, like not, you know, he's not, he said, you know, not like I want to do two a days every day, but he's demanding more practices. He even said, oh, ask Nick Sirianni when I think about the practices, what I, what I want, you know? So it's really up to the, it's up to the head coach. It's up to Howie Roseman of, you know, what direction they should go in during the practice. This is going to be the first time since Sirianni has been hired as the head coach that they're going to have mini camp this year in June from June 4th to June 6th, you know? So I think every roster is going to have players that don't like 
coordinators because maybe they're controlling during practices. Maybe, you know, I, I don't, I think guys aren't respected maybe as people, but as coaches, maybe they're more respected. We saw how Jalen Ramsey felt. We saw how Javon Holland felt from Miami. Like my, he made that video of kicking a rock once Fangio left Miami that they mutually parted ways. So it felt like there was a lot of players that just wanted them out of town. Okay. But I mean, statistically, they didn't play that bad last year. You know, not fantastic against the pass, but as uh, getting good pressures and using specific linebackers downhill at times. And, um, you know, the blitz rate I can't even find online. I'm trying to even look for it at this point. I can't even find it. And I'll obviously make a video on it if there is one because I've tried looking at it from the, uh, another point of view. Um so I think you always get that from every – there's going to be players that don't like specific coaches, but in today's day and age with players, when they get paid a lot of money, okay, even players that don't get paid high-tier type contracts, a lot of players feel like they don't have to work hard. And you know what's funny? What The funny thing is, like Vic Fangio said during the Eagles press conference, was that I think the one thing that's important is pushing players, you know, and setting them up for success – uh, him not scheming himself out of things during in game, not trying to be sneaky, special with certain co you know coverage schemes or whatever. That they'll go back to basics if they have to if, th if things are going downhill. Because in my eyes, with Vic Fangio and this defense, I feel like you know if this doesn't work out this year and this defense is a total failure with Vic Fangio, I feel like they need to go a different direction again. And I'm not even talking about not liking Vic Fangio, but just saying the scheme has got to change after this year if it's really not panning out and be more to an aggressive state, uh, you know, for, you know, for your defense, you know what I mean? I felt like the off season was harder for at least from a fan perspective. It felt like the off season was going to be a lot harder because, you know, you're changing, you're putting the scheme higher than the players, or now you have to go out and, and look for specific players that fit your specific team. You don't look at your roster and say, okay, I think we could play a more aggressive, uh, aggressive scheme of defense than just change it all, getting rid of a lot of players. And, I'm not mad at the moves that the Eagles made this offseason between free agency. I mean, between re-signs and just signing free agents, they, they've they made like 17, 17, 18 moves between that. And then the draft, they really piled it on entirely. So in this day and age of players, like there, there's, there's players that are divas. There's players that, you know, when they're pushed too much making millions, they, they think it's disrespect. You know, like, or they're not being used the specific way that they want them to be used. You know what? At the end of the day, if you're successful and they're putting you in good position, then who cares? You know what I mean? So s players just have to follow what's going on. And yeah, of course you want to get feedback from some of the players, but I don't think Fandrew did a horrible job with Miami. Um, you know, but specifically coming to the Eagles now, he knows the front office. He knows the, a lot of the players here that were already here because he was already here in 2022, which he was more helping the defense in 22. Sorry, helping the offense more than the defense as a consultant, you know, to kind of give the offense another set of eyes, giving the coaching staff another set of eyes of what that offense is facing defensively every single week and what specific guys are going to do. So Vic Fangio had a big hand in 22 on helping out the offense tremendously. Okay. But be, now with this draft and I mean the players that you have now, and this is the next segment to the video here with Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeJean at this point, this is just a moment now where you really can't mess this up. This is a moment now to where you have to start cutting out the fat and you got to start preparing for the future of this defense, whether it's with Vic Fangio or without him after this year. You know, James Bradbury is <laughs> the one thing that really stops everything from progressing. If you have no plan with James Bradbury after this year, even if you play him this year, Okay, and your and your your plan like going into the season is well, we're gonna hold on to Bradbury for one more year as a starter, and then we're gonna let him go or try to trade him with one year left or something like that. I feel like they're wasting their time. Like if he's not a long term piece, 
throw these guys into the fire with Bradbury lining up. Just just think about it. With Bradbury lining up with the first team at practice, at camp, at joint practices, at the preseason games, with him lining up in that spot, you're totally just mowing down Eli Ricks down. I mean, you're taking you're 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 giving these guys such a back seat to where we could see so much more with Keely Ringo, you know, Keely Ringo, sorry, Keely Ringo especially going forward with this team. You know what I mean? Sidney Brown coming back specifically cuz there's there's news out right now that Sidney Brown might even be back uh by joint practices that he might be back first a couple months ago he would have been back by the first game. Now he might even come back a lot earlier. So that's if he can make it into the middle of camp, that would be fantastic. Because when you miss camp, you have to learn the terminology. You have to you have to play in this defense. You have to you know not only learn mentally, but you got to learn physically as well. So another hybrid player coming back. You know, Eli Ricks has shown some flash. Keely Ringo, like Keely Ringo, is one of the besides Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeJean, mainly Quinion Mitchell because he's the outside guy. I think having Bradbury here is going to hurt Keely Ringo's off season because it's just going to, it's, it's just red shirting him at this point. You know what I mean? It's a waste of time that, you know, every time you keep a player, it's going to give another player. That's going to make it too, too. It's going to make another year harder for Keely Ringo or any type of defensive back. That's in the, or at least cornerback wise on the outside. That's in this room right now. It's going to be really hard to climb that mountain. And this, <laughs> Yeah, we're loaded. We are loaded at, at, at DB. I mean, at least the secondary is loaded right now. Is loaded. Can they add another safety? Can they do different? Yeah, sure. Depending on what they do with Cooper DeJean. And we can talk about, we talked about that a million times. We've talked about this a million times because I think this is really important. I don't want to see Keely Ringo like just stay on the practice squad all year. Well, not even that, but I mean, he'll make the team, but. I don't want him to just sit on the bench all year and just and like I I expect Keely Ringo not to get much playing time this year, but this off season, God forbid, someone gets hurt, somebody could this this is the year where, yes, I don't want to find out that Quinion Mitchell is going to be a backup, not even start as a first round pick, redshirt his ass the whole entire year, not even the whole year, but maybe three quarters of the year. I don't think Bradbury is going to hold up. And I'm sorry, but cut the fat off the steak. Seriously. Like, get rid of it. If there's no, like, if you're going to keep Bradbury and they didn't draft a, a, a corner in the first round, and it was just Cooper DeJean, then I would understand 100%. They want to keep Bradbury for a couple years and whatever. But that's not the case. You drafted two DBs. Technically, you drafted two outside corners. Okay, and, and the first and second rounds. You drafted two top 20 players. Okay. And Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeJean. It, like, you, you can't... This is the opportunity now to get out of this hole at corner that we've been dealing with for years. And signing and trading for corners. We've been down that bucket list of cornerbacks over and over. Trading for them. Signing ones to big deals that never worked out. And Slay has worked out. But another reason is because Slay's leaving next year. And they need to find out a lot more with this roster. Keeping Bradbury here. Sure, like, Quinnon Mitchell and Dijon and, and Keely Ringo and some of these other guys are going to get a lot of reps. But, like... You know, they they had a lot of they 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 played a lot of games last year. They played a lot of games last year and you know, did they play fantastic? No, they played bad, no. Uh, you know, Ringo flashed, Eli Ricks flashed, but it's just not enough. I feel like like you need to throw these guys into the fire, throw these young bulls into the fire and let them just let them produce. The final piece to the puzzle, this whole entire situation is the coaching staff. I don't want to go through another offseason next year getting new coordinators again, new assistant coaches again, okay? And you know what? If the Eagles are very successful this year, I, I mean, Vic Fangio is definitely not going anywhere. He's already been down the road of head coach. He's already done it. He's been a defensive coordinator a million times in his career. So I'm not worried about him leaving, but it is Kellen Moore as well. We have to think about that down the line. This is an opportunity where now, not only do you have specific players that can play on the outside, Isaiah Rogers coming in too. Like we're, I mean, there's so there's so many bodies right now. The cuts are going to be really tough. Okay, there's going to be a lot of the, a lot of hard decisions are going to be made going into um, this off season program, especially when it takes one day to cut 
your roster all the way down to you know fifty three. It's gonna be it's gonna be nuts. It's gonna be crazy. Okay. So that's all I gotta say about that whole entire situation. I feel like it will be a big mistake. And then because if if Quinion Mitchell jumps into a game down the road, say week twelve, week thirteen, or something like that, and when they had enough of Bradbury, then it's like he's gotta learn. Quinion Mitchell's gotta learn all over again at that point. And he's not gonna look good. Quinion Mitchell will not look good if he jumps to the season late. He won't. Doesn't matter what he did at training camp. When you're not playing, period. You're not going to look good. These guys will not look good if they get no playing time. You just have to throw these guys. I mean, really the top team, really the top two teams from this draft that really improved the secondary. I think the Lions did a fantastic job. You know, Green Bay had a killer draft, but the Eagles did fantastic. Perfect fits for this defense. Cooper DeJean, I'm not really worried about too much because he's a moving piece. He's more valued as a moving piece, a piece that, you know, a guy that plays multiple positions. So I'm not really worried about his case, but you keep Bradbury. It's like, what's going to happen to Quinion Mitchell? Was I, Isaiah Rogers just going to be a kick returner? I mean, come on now. And if Bradbury is, if Bradbury wins the job over everybody else, come on now, then you're playing favorites at this point, but no rumors on Bradbury's departure, post June cut, whatever the case may be. This is the perfect year to develop your guys, throw them in the fire, just get this thing started for the future. You know what I mean? Like I said, if things were different, you know, and they didn't draft Quinion and it was somebody else or a defensive lineman or whatever, then okay, I get it. I get it. But two DBs the first two rounds, and you have the perfect opportunity now to get this position right. I thought Bradbury and Slay were going to leave last year because of certain, because, you know, Slay went to almost went to the Ravens, came back, got more money. And then that whole thing with Slay during the year on his podcast and things that he said. And Bradbury hasn't been mentally right since, you know, I got to understand the defensive coordinators sucked last year. Desai was a better coordinator than Matt Patricia, but man, Bradbury looked like he was just getting beat all year. I mean, not even really just being content and, even I never even seen Bradbury in tight coverage one time this past year. So, yeah, it makes me a little nervous. Maybe they trade him. I don't know. How much value does he have? Not much. So, that's where I kind of get into. It starts with Fangio creating this new defensive culture. You have a lot of voices in this room now. Leadership. You have some swag in this room. That's going to elevate the other guys. Chauncey Garner Johnson, Devin White. If they get Justin Simmons, I mean, they got they got a lot of voices in that room. Brandon Graham is back for one more year. And then the practices. Are they hard practices? Are they soft practice? I, I I have a feeling Van Joe wants to make these practices more demanding. I want to see him mic'd up. I want to see him coach. I want to see, I want to see him pissed off. I want to see what he's like. And if he's 25, 30% of an asshole in practice, I'm totally fine with it. These players need a kick in the ass. They need a boot in the ass. They need to just, they need to get kicked around. Don't care if you're an older player. Don't care how much money you're making. Don't care. This is what you get paid to do. I'm not going to see this defense crumble like it did last year mentally. No sense of urgency. Giving up. I want to flush 2023 down the toilet in a heartbeat as much as possible. This is a new, this could be a top secondary in the league. And that's really weird to say. Um, They have the guys to do it. Can the coaches get the, make the right decisions roster wise and gang them prepared wise every week. And could they transform these guys really well into this off-season program to get things done. That's where I'm at with this secondary going forward. So I think it's very important. That's really it. Um, I want to get into one more bit of news here regarding uh, the Eagles joint practices. You know, obviously the Eagles are going to be facing some team this off-season. Now it's looking like there's news coming out that it's going to be the Patriots uh, in joint practice 
practices. So we'll obviously we'll be facing them obviously, you know, in new England, or we're going to be home against them. I, I, I don't know. I don't, we haven't got the schedule yet, obviously. And I, I think we've gotten, obviously we have the opponents right now scheduled this week. So stay tuned for that. And, um, you know, we have the Patriots in joint. So that's the only bit of news we have as of right now. And uh, that's where we're at. Um, if you guys haven't checked out the Philly Shakedown podcast merch, new all uh, some new stuff that has come out, uh, the big pimp and Howie Roseman shirt uh, that is available on pre-order right now. If you did order a Cooper DeJean, Dijon shirt, it is coming. Uh, it is being shipped out this week, early this week, Monday, Tuesday. So definitely look out in the mail for that. But definitely pre-order the big pimpin', the pimp hand strong Howie Roseman t-shirt, looking like a pimp, looking like a G with the pimp hat, the pimp jacket, the medallion with his initials. Looks fantastic. Uh, so definitely check out that merch link in the description below on all that great stuff. And uh, if you guys haven't liked the video, please like and subscribe for more Eagles news every single day. And all the support has been fantastic. So excited for camp, excited, uh, you know, kind of wanted to give you the background of Vic Fangio, what players think of him and, and what really needs to change. The opportunities are endless what the Eagles could do to change this team around defensively. Um, I think we're in a perfect spot. You know, let me know what you guys think about the defense in general. What do you guys think of Vic Fangio? Do you think the practices will be hard? Do you think they'll be more demanding? Do you think, you know, players will li like him, you know, maybe dislike him, but, you know, like his coaching, respect his coaching? You guys let me know. And uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. And I will see you guys on the next one. Shake's quote up, follow slide. Peace out, guys. Peace.